Hey everybody, this is Indium here. We're back again recording another episode of Let's Play Metroid Prime. So in the last video we destroyed and thwarted Thardis in an epic boss battle that um is, and we and we got the uh spider ball for defeating him. So uh in this video we're going to go down to Magma Caverns. This is where we left off in the last video. So let's go. <clears throat> So yeah, there's not really much we can do here. I mean, I think there's a few pickups we can get. I know there's an energy tank we can get um, in Magma Caverns pretty much straight after we get off here. Like, at uh, this elevator... St at this elevator stop, we can then... Um, like, in the next room here, this is where uh, the energy tank is. Uh, hang on a second, wait a minute. Where are we right now? Uh, what's in here? Is this anything? I think this is actually a, yeah, this is a save station, okay. Alright, so, yeah, actually, you know what? I'm gonna save it, because I haven't saved it yet, so, <laughs> I think this is a good place to save. Uh, especially after defeating that boss battle. So, um, yeah, we're gonna come into this room here, and there, we have to do, like, a miniature puzzle that involves scanning and stuff, and there's also a bunch of flying space pirates in this room too. But this room is an adjoining room that leads up to an area that we actually can't access until much later on in the game, so that kind of blows. I can maybe show you why we can't access it um, after doing the puzzle. Because I don't have anything particularly planned for this video, I just don't, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't even know where we have to go. I don't know if we're at that point of the game where we have to go get the Ice Beam, or if we're at that point of the game where we have to go to Talon Overworld, because the Ice Beam is found in Chozo Ruins, um, and there isn't really much to do in Talon Overworld until we get the Ice Beam, as far as I know. So it's like, I mean, there must like the thing that we have to do next must be to go and get the Ice Beam, and if that is, then we are going to have to make our way back to Chozo Ruins. But either way, it will tell us. It will tell us where we have to go. A little bit. Like it will come up with a scanning thing, and it will tell us that. Well, it will come up with a notification telling us where we need to go, and then we, you know, open up the world map, and then it will pinpoint us to where we have to go next. So, <clears throat> right. So how do we start this puzzle here? I have to remember. Um, I thought you had to scan this, and that's what started it. Uh, hang on a second. Three nearby power conduits must be energized. Okay, so maybe we have to use the thermal visor here to actually do this. Um, yeah, we do. We just have to shoot the power conduits. Alright, so that's what activates this. I thought you had to do this last. I thought this was like part of the puzzle is shooting the power conduits, but this is actually what starts it. So we shoot these and that will uh, drain out the lava for us, which means we can now access these little rooms here. Each with its own individual individual scan that we need to do to open up the next area, like the next room which leads up to the next part of the puzzle. It'll start to make more sense once we actually get into it. <clears throat> so you can just go down to the... Uh, no, it's not this one. Duh, it's this one here. The one that's nearest to you. I'm going to scan this. So that will open up the east channel door for us. And so on and so on until you end up eventually getting the item that we, we are after, which is the energy tank. If you want to, you can use your boost ball, but I don't really see how the boost ball will really help in a situation like this unless you get a really nice straight path to boost. A lot of it's all twisty. Like the passageways are all twisty, so you can't really effectively boost ball in in here anyway. <laughs> so so go down here, and uh, yeah, we can boost ball through here, I guess. And there's the energy tank right there, right in front of our very eyes. So we got ourselves the energy tank, and that increases our health up to. Is it six we're at now? It looks like six to me. Yeah, it is six. So we've got six energy tanks, and I think there are twenty in the game. 
Uh, or maybe not. No, there can't be 20 in the game. There has to be like 15, probably. Fifth, oh, I don't know. Right, so I was, I was going to point out to you that I was going to show you uh, why we can't access this other area here. Well, if you come in through this door here, um, you'll come to a tunnel that is basically blocked off by all this debris. And we can't actually get to the other side of it, obviously, because we don't have anything that's destructible enough to really eradicate it. Unstable bendesium debris blocking path. So whenever you see anything that says bendesium, that means it can't be destroyed unless you have power bombs. Power bombs is the only thing that can destroy bendesium. So whenever you scan something and it comes up with that, just note to self that you cannot get through there without power bombs. So we're doing pretty good for time here. I thought that was going to take a lot longer than, than it actually did to do that puzzle. So this is a puddle spore. This is a new enemy. Uh, basically, when it opens its mouth, you shoot it. Kind of like the... Um, what, are, what are they? The clams in Ocarina of Time. You have to wait until their mouth opens before you can actually cut the mollusk in half. Slice and dice. Mm. And this is also an iconic room of magma caverns right here. But we can't really do anything in this room yet because we don't have the grapple hook. So we can't get to the higher platforms without it. Yeah, and this room you won't be coming into much later anyway. And also you can see that there is a ice beam door on the very top. So that's even more of an indication that we can't do this room yet. Because we don't have the ice beam, we're lacking so much equipment, even though we have actually got quite a few stuff. We got the freaking spider ball, we got the super missiles, we've done so much in such a little time. I'm surprised at the amount of progress I'm making within the little amount of videos that I've done so far into this let's play. I think I'm on like part 18 right now. And I'd say I'm about, well actually no, I wouldn't say I'm about halfway through the game. I'm definitely over a quarter of the way through it. <coughs> which is crazy to think about because this game is actually quite long if you play through it and you know you try and enjoy the game and um, you take your time with it it is quite a long game to beat <clears throat> but considering I'm skipping out most of the scanning that definitely um, saves a lot of time <clears throat> but by the same rule, I, I mean, I would love to sit there and read all the scans to show you just what they say, but by the same rule, if I was to sit there and read every scan in the game, that would take up way too much time on the video. And if I was to do that, you can guarantee there would be like a 20 minute video of me just reading scans, especially in some of them space pirate research facilities, because that's not just the only space pirate research facility that there is in the game. There's one in the final area, well final, technically final world in the game. I don't count the final area of the game technically the final world of the game because it's really short. There's not much to do in the final area of the game. Um, there's only like a few rooms and that's it, but what I'm talking about is the final world of the game. We've been to most of the areas, like most of the worlds in the game, there's only two more like areas I guess you could say that we haven't unlocked yet um, so instead of going through all this crap because we don't need to well, I'm just gonna go to Talon overall because this is the uh, easiest shortcut to take to get back to Chosen Ruins which I think is where I need to go anyway because uh, I'm, I'm telling you now there's not much that I can do in Talon overall there, there's hardly anything that I can do there um, Apart from go to the artifact ruins, which I guess, I guess I could do that uh, if, if I really wanted to. Um, but I don't know I got more important things to do, and that's kind of out of the way to get to um, the artifact ruins. And I just want to press on and go to Chozo ruins. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. You know, we have one primary objective, we're going to stick to it, we're not going to go off on a tangent and go elsewhere. 
once you have a primary objective and you know exactly what you're doing, you stick to that primary objective. You don't go off and do something else. Unless you're playing a game that's non-linear, but this game isn't really non-linear. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's. I mean, you can backtrack and stuff, but like the. I don't know. Like when you're playing the. Once you play the game like so many times, it starts to become non -lin, Um. It starts to become linear because you already know what you do and you know where you're going. And if you progress in the game and you're not, you know, backtracking to collect collectibles, it's like then. Like, when you backtrack into collect collectibles, then it's not linear because you're going through all the worlds, you know, you're going backtrack into all these places, and you're not really following a straight path as such. But, like, playing through the game and actually doing the main objectives of the game is, it is very linear. So, uh, I don't know, it's kind of a mix between linear and non-linear. I hope I explained that right, or in, in clear enough detail. Oh, hello, it's uh, the plated armor beetle. So he's now decided to show up as a regular enemy here. And these things can easily be killed now. Now that we have super missiles, these things are no longer a threat to us. Come on, then charge at me, dude. <laughs> Man, he took... Oh, come on, dude. He deflected it. Yeah, you think you're so cool because you can deflect my... Man, you know what? I'm not using super missiles because I need those, so I'm just going to kill him with the power beam. Screw it. But I think when we fought him the first time, we didn't even have the charge beam, so. Yeah, we didn't have the charge beam. There's no way we had the charge beam when we first fought him. So you want to destroy this thing on the tree here, and that opens up a little alcove inside the tree, which uh, will eventually reveal the um, missile expansion for us which I guess I might be able to get towards the end of this video if I can get this one in here thank you the one inside the tree is a bit of a nuisance to get actually because you have to go up to a high ground and then jump into it so you have to come up here and you kinda have to strafe into the tree to grab it but strafing into it is not as easy as it looks when you have freaking. Um, well, actually, hang on a second. Maybe from here it might be a good vantage point. Yeah, look at that. That was not so bad, I guess. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to end off the video inside this tree here. So, um, in the next episode, let's play Metroid Prime. We shall make more progress in uh, Chozo Ruins and uh, finding out where we need to go next. So, until then, this is NDM saying thanks for watching. Take care, what a similar video, and goodbye.